Hey, good morning, good afternoon to you all. Mark again here, Weatherman Plus. It is Friday, April 30th. Yay, we made it. It is the weekend. Sad to say tomorrow is officially May 1st, so that's kind of scary. But good morning all of you. Hope you have a very blessed day today. Now, the two videos I have for you, the very top one is showing you the wind gusts that will be passing through the central U.S., the Ohio Valley, and the Northeast. Because of the low pressure system squeezing together, it will create winds on the front and the back side of this pressure system. Also, right above my head, I have the NAM 3K, which is the shortest, most accurate that we can get in detail for our models. And it's showing you the rainfall for Texas. I'm showing that Texas and northern Louisiana will be a big flooding event that will be happening for the next couple of days. I've never been here before. Hello, my name is Mark. I do upload every single day, just not Friday afternoon into Saturday afternoon. That's when I take my Sabbath. But I appreciate you for being here. God bless you. Hit the subscribe button if you do love weather content. As well as Texas having tornado threats also for the next couple of days. And this will shift a little more east and north as the days come along. For today in the green you have thunderstorms and you're in marginal for severe weather in this dark green. As well as a tornado threat in lower Texas. Now there will be some wind and some hail that will be with that. So you need to watch out for that. And tomorrow there will be some thunderstorms in these green areas. But there will be marginal in this dark green up here in the Midwest. And it'll be dark green in Texas again. And you do have a tornado threat for tomorrow as well, Texas. For right here in lower Texas, it's only 2%. But once again, I've seen the most tornado warnings that I've seen in my five years come from 2% <laughs> potential. But you also have the wind threat that will be also for the Midwest. And you have it for Texas as well. And you do have the hail threat for down there also. Now Sunday, things are going to start picking up. Sunday, Monday, even Tuesday, I'm showing could be some pretty significant events. All this green area here is thunderstorms for Sunday. But now you can see you're in a marginal and a slight risk for severe weather in these areas. And the main cities for slight risk is Memphis, Tennessee, New Orleans, Louisiana, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, Jackson, Mississippi, and Metairie, Louisiana. And you also have a 5% area here and a 15% area for severe weather for Sunday. And I'm still showing that the day four outlook for Monday is still showing 15% chance for severe weather for Monday because we do have a low pressure system that is coming through the south and I'm actually showing that it probably will be picked up for Tuesday as well a little further to the southeast because it's going to be a pretty strong storm. So far for Monday your slight risk is Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, Tulsa, Oklahoma, Springfield, Missouri, Norman, Oklahoma, and Broken Arrow, Oklahoma. Now as we go through our, our morning this morning you can see we have our low pressure system leaving out the northeast with the rain. We have this 540 line. This is your cold Arctic air. It will be coming in. It will affect the Midwest, but however, today won't be as bad as tomorrow. But with these close pressure systems, you can see the tight isobars. It will be some damage in wind as well. Plus, for the next couple of days, there'll be a lot of rain going through Texas. And there is that tornado threat from these vorticity of the updraft being created with these surface low pressures. And it will carry up. So it will be a lot of rainfall for Texas. And with this rain leaving on a wraparound, you will have some snowfall. It's showing less amounts now than I showed yesterday. But as the 540 cold air comes in, you can see on the wraparound, you actually start to get some snow. It's mostly going to be in northern because it is the wraparound because the temperatures are still too warm, too late in the southern half of New York or Pennsylvania. And by the time the cold air moves in real good, it's going to put some good snowfall for y'all all day, all evening long. And by the time the cold air moves in really good, the precipitation is already going to be gone. So it will be light amounts. It will be in higher elevations. And once again, this is your culprit here. You can see the cold air coming in with this high pressure. You can see tight isobars creating a damage in winds from these pressure systems squeezing together. So not only will you have it on the northeast from the front of this pressure squeezing into this low pressure, on the back side you will also have some damaging winds for the Midwest as it carries over squeezing into the high pressure once again. This is a Euro model and it's showing early this morning you are starting to get some winds going but it's showing that it does bust up to over 50 miles per hour winds as you get by noon time today and 30s and 40s for the Ohio Valley. Then as you go to 7 o'clock tonight the winds are still going to be there and the reason why I'm showing you different models is Euro is showing us widespread uh, 50s and NAM 3K is showing that it's going to be uh, mostly 40s with isolated 50s. So I'm going to show you both of them so we can kind of make sure we're prepared for everything. And the NAM 3K shows as you start to move in it has 30s, it has some 40s. It does have some isolated 50s in there. That's what the yellow is. That's 50 miles per hour plus uh, wind gusts. And as you go through your overnight into tomorrow morning, it shows it's still, still there, but it starts to leave by tomorrow morning. The last people that will get it will be the northeast 
but it does show that there is chances for 40s and 50s with this, as well as on the back side. You can see the, the high pressure system right here. And on the back side, you have a low pressure in the back, you have low pressure in front, and squeezing together will cause these tight isobars, and it will create these damaging winds. And I'm showing Nebraska, uh, Wisconsin, Minnesota. All y'all could be getting 40 and 50 miles per hour wind gusts come tomorrow morning as it moves across. Plus your temperatures. Your temperatures for tomorrow morning will start to get cold and it will be freezing for a lot of people. You can see in the Midwest, mostly you're in the 40s to the 50s. Ohio Valley starts getting into the 30s as well as Michigan. And this is your temperatures. It will go pretty far down up to Tennessee, Kentucky. Western North Carolina should see it as it goes to the Northeast. So it will be a good dip of cold air. And it will put the Northeast in a lot of freezing conditions and extreme uh, New England states, upper New York, will be in the 20s. So it will be a cold air that will be coming through for everybody. Uh, it's southern New Jersey, it looks like you're going to be in the 40s so, so far, as well as Delaware and Maryland. And it is bringing those high winds with it since those pressure systems are squeezing together. It will create some winds. So the wind chill will be even colder. It's not going to affect too much for uh, Wisconsin and Minnesota for the Midwest, but you can see it does feel like you're in the 30s and lower Wisconsin. But it's not going to be your temperatures, but it's going to feel like that with the wind chill. The Ohio Valley, you're going to feel like you're in your 20s as well as Michigan. And the wind chill does go pretty far south. Uh, Western North Carolina, Western Virginia, Kentucky, y'all going to feel like y'all in freezing temperatures with this wind chill. But the Northeast is really going to get the bulk of the cold air. And they're going to really feel like not only in their 20s, but the temperatures that was freezing is now feeling like you're in the teens to the single digits. So that is some very, very cold air. Plus, we have all the severe weather that will be going on until Monday, but I'm still showing that this will carry on until Tuesday because Monday evening, you can see the strong rain bands, the heavy rain that's with that very dark color. As you go into Tuesday, it will spread to the south, and it still stays strong. And with this being a low-pressure system pulling the dew points, all the moisture, it will be some updraft. It will be some convective activity. I think this, the severe weather in the south will carry on until Tuesday. Now your snowfall is also showing different rates for the Northeast. Multiple models are showing that it will be a major snowfall in upper New York, but everybody else would be light amounts with isolated three to five. And this one's a GFS. It also confirms that it'd be mostly a northern uh, snowfall. It's just the temperatures are just way too warm in the south, south half of Northeast. But they're all showing something different. And the Euro shows even less. It, all three agrees that there will be more snowfall in northern New York, but the rest of y'all, it shows that it would be very light. So it's kind of hit and miss between the models. And no matter which model I look at, all of them show that Texas is really going to see some flooding going on. You can see the precipitation rate in the northeast that would be coming with the possible snowfall for them. But this is the NAM 3K, and it's showing heavy for Texas. San Antonio, a couple of inches. Houston, a couple of inches. But right to the west of your Houston is the heaviest part. I mean, it's showing 18 inches of rainfall as possible in this isolated here. That is a lot of rainfall, 18 inches of rainfall within the next three days. I guarantee that's within the next 48 hours. And so far, it's not showing a whole bunch for Dallas, but just south of you, Dallas, is three to four inches. So it could be a little more northern. It needs to update. This is a lot of rainfall. And once you get to San Angelo, it's pretty much less than two inches, but it starts getting way less as you go west. So most of it will be central, southeast, and northeast Texas. Now, GFS is also showing that it will be heavy rainfall, but it's showing more uh, heavier for southern Texas and northern Louisiana going into Mississippi. It's showing a possible one to three inches from southern Mississippi. As you go more northern, it shows more heavier. Uh, northern Louisiana shows anywhere from three to six inches possible of rainfall, but it still confirms that southern and southeast Texas will be seeing anywhere from five to nine inches of rainfall, which is possible. And the Euro is kind of showing a little bit of both. It's showing heavy rainfall for Louisiana and Mississippi, as well as Alabama and northern Georgia, western Tennessee. But it is confirming once again that there is a lot of heavy rainfall that will be in southeast Texas. The Euro is showing that Corpus Christi is going to get over four inches, San Antonio over two inches, Houston over five inches, but in between Houston and San Antonio, it's showing 20 inches possible of rainfall. So that's twice we've seen 18 and 20 inches up in this region. So you really need to watch out for your rainfall. And the pollen count for today, as you can see, the yellow is medium, orange is medium high, red is high. And you can see your pollen count for today. There's a lot of red states out there. Matter of fact, this is the highest that I've seen the pollen in Wisconsin. It's in the total red. 
where before has been half orange or half red. So there's a lot of high pollen in these red areas for today. And that's pretty much it, guys. Short and easy. There's not a lot going on today. we got to watch out for the flooding, the severe weather that will be coming on, the hail, as well as what's coming a little bit in the future. But them damaging winds, y'all need to watch out for in the northeast. Now, I'm going to play this so you can see what's going on with according to Dam 3K from the severe weather, the flooding, and the snowfall and the rain in the northeast that will be happening. So, at the same time, of course, I want to celebrate God. God bless you all. Hope you have a very blessed day today. Psalm 41. Blessed is he that considereth the poor. The Lord will deliver him in time of trouble. The Lord will preserve him and keep him alive. And he shall be blessed upon the earth, and thou, and thou wilt not deliver him until the will of his enemies. The Lord will strengthen him upon the bed of languishing. Thou wilt make all his bed in his sickness. I said, Lord, be merciful unto me. Heal my soul, for I have sinned against thee. Mine, enemy, mine enemies speak evil of me. When shall he die and his name perish? And if he come to see me, he speaketh vanity. His heart gathereth iniquity to itself. When he goeth abroad, he telleth it. All that hate me whisper together against me. Against me do they devise my hurt. An evil disease, say they, cleaveth fast unto him, and now that he lieth, he shall rise up no more. Yea, mine own familiar friend, in whom I trusted, which did eat of my bread, hath lifted up his heel against me. But thou, O Lord, be merciful unto me, and raise me up, that I may requite them. By this I know that thou favorest me, because mine enemies doeth not triumph over me. And as for me, thou upholdest me in mine integrity, and settest me before thy face forever. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, from everlasting and to everlasting. Amen and amen. Amen. I appreciate y'all for watching my video today. Please hit that like button if you enjoyed the shorter video, but that's all that's going on. And if you're wondering what shirt I'm wearing, this is actually my favorite shirt. It's actually Jesus. It's actually Jesus giving me a hug. So I love this shirt. This is my most, most comfortable shirt. I love to wear it, especially when I go outside and everybody just looks at it. And then when you see the back side of me, you see Jesus giving a hug. God bless you all. I hope you have a very blessed day. All glory does go to God. God of Jacob. Amen. <laughs> Good Shabbos, everybody.